Welcome to this webinar series, Introducing Mathematica 11. I'm John McLoon. I work at Technical Strategy at Wolfram Research, and I've been at Wolfram since the days of Mathematica 2.0, so it's a great pleasure to be the one to introduce you to Mathematica 11, the 19th release that I've been involved with. With over 500 new functions, and a huge number of improvements to existing functions, there's more to Mathematica 11 than I can possibly tell you in this webinar. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview and try and share with you our vision that this release takes us one step closer towards. Afterwards, stick around for other sessions that will go into more depth. I will try and answer as many of your questions as possible at the end of this session, but if you ask them during the session through the chat window at the side of the screen, then we have experts on hand who will also try and answer them. Let me start by reminding you of the ambitious goal of the Mathematica system. We're trying to build a single integrated system that seamlessly combines all of technical computing. So while it's sometimes helpful to look at Mathematica from the viewpoint of a particular field of computation, it's vital to the design of Mathematica that functionality is not ring-fenced into discrete toolboxes, but is coherently unified to give you an uninterrupted workflow and to give you a common language to exchange technical ideas with colleagues with different computational needs. Nevertheless, one perspective from which a lot of people view Mathematica is from the world of data science. And one of the most exciting fields in data science at the moment is machine learning. Here is a typical application using computer vision to try and recognize image contents. As I held up the object, you can see underneath Mathematica's best guess as to what it's seeing. Mathematica 11 now recognizes over 10,000 different objects. And you can see, on the whole, it does a pretty good job of recognizing what it sees. Now version 11 extends and improves these capabilities with new functions for clustering data, reducing dimensionality, and extracting features. Machine learning functions also now accept a wider range of data types. The version 10 release series made machine learning accessible to those without data science backgrounds. But Mathematica 11 extends those capabilities to the expert user too by exposing a complete symbolic framework for building custom neural networks. A full complement of vision-oriented layers is included, as well as encoders and decoders to make training vision networks interoperate seamlessly with the rest of the language. So you can now train your own image identifiers. But here, I just have a simple text sentiment analyzer. The neural network that you see here took just a few lines of code to specify. If I ask it to retrain that neural network, you will see that the error gradually reduces as the network is trained to my dataset. Training now supports GPU acceleration, and sadly I don't have one on this laptop, making it feasible to train networks on big datasets using standard hardware. So whether you're classifying fuzzy data, making predictions, or extracting important features from complex data, Mathematica's machine learning is accessible to beginners and experts alike. Of course, data science isn't just about machine learning, and we've added extensive functionality for handling many different specific kinds of data. Text processing has been extended with more tools for cleaning text and for extracting structured information and semantic meaning from words and sentences. Here you can see the sentence structure being calculated as I type. Mathematica 11 also extends support for a large range of non-English languages and character sets. Another key data type is sound, and we've developed a completely new audio framework. Audio data is now effectively a first-class object in Mathematica. There's a whole collection of new local and global audio measurements, and new filters and audio effects have been added. The new audio object is capable of representing multi-channel sound in memory, out of core, and streaming. Of course, one area where Mathematica is already very strong is image processing, but there are lots of new capabilities here too. There's better support for processing and viewing out-of-core images, significantly extended image highlighting, and much better color support. Text recognition makes use of the improvements to international character sets and word data that I already mentioned, so that it now supports 60 different languages. There are new capabilities for image alignment and measuring content displacement between sequences of images. I'm using image displacement measurement here to overlay a vector diagram which indicates the average flow through this video sequence. As the general image processing functionality has become broad enough, 
it's been possible for us to start extending it into different image processing application areas. Mathematica 11 supports, for example, new computational photography capabilities, such as combining multiple exposure images and then tone mapping the resulting HDR image. White balance controls and color temperature adjustments have also been enhanced for photography. And in the field of microscopy image processing, we've added focus compositing. This example obviously isn't from a microscope, but it exhibits a common microscopy issue. The depth of field is too shallow to get everything in focus at once. However, if we combine all of the different images with their different focus distances, we can create a single image with a very high depth of field. Everything's in focus at once. As I said at the start, it's important that functionality joins up. So let's take a look at an image that might simply be the first step towards a bigger computation. Here's satellite imagery of the Great Sword Lake. Now there's lots you can do with pixel data, but there's lots of things where it isn't the best representation. So Mathematica 11 has introduced capabilities for automatically converting images into computable geometric objects. This is the triangulated mesh representation of the region. And 3D images, say from an MRI scan, can also be converted to 3D geometry meshes. Of course, Mathematica's geometry framework has also been extended. There are new ways to specify regions from arrays and meshes, or by using new special region constructs. There are fast ways to compute simple bounding regions, and there's also a bunch of new properties that can be calculated from any kind of region. For example, I can take this simple model, the Space Shuttle, and I can calculate its moments of inertia directly. But one area where there have been dramatic improvements is to create a complete seamless workflow through 3D printing. You can now print essentially any 3D plot or geometric object directly to your 3D printer. And if you don't have a 3D printer, well that doesn't matter, as Mathematica also integrates into a range of third-party online printing services. This tool I made lets me paste a simple 2D logo and using the image mesh function that I showed you before, it creates a 3D solid version. But when I click this button, it calls on the, in this case, Sculptio online service, uploads my object, and then after I've confirmed the size and color of materials, I just pay them and my object gets sent to me in the post. To make sure that 3D printing works, there are also new tools for mesh defect detection, mesh repair, and for resizing and aligning objects. We can even hollow out solid objects for you to save on print toner. Geometry isn't all about abstract shapes or creating nice printable objects though. It's a fundamental way of describing real world objects and spaces ready for computation. All kinds of computations in Mathematica understand regions as input specifications, from integration to optimization. So let's take a look at that lake region that we looked at a minute ago and compute with it. We could, for example, study how the wave equation behaves on this lake. And we've got a new tool in that toolkit too. New methods for finding eigenvalues for differential operators over regions allow us to see the different oscillation modes of this lake. Or we could create an interesting initial perturbation and solve the partial differential equation to see how the waves would travel around this region over time. That's a 2D geometric region, but of course we can do the same thing in 3D. For example, here, using some imported CAD data, we can see an exaggerated visualization of the fifth eigenfunction of this engine camshaft. Other maths improvements include support for integral equations, dramatic improvements in solving symbolic partial differential equations, and a slew of new number theory functions. Being able to easily compute ever more complex results puts more pressure on the ability to visualize them. And so Mathematica 11 has added a whole collection of new 4D visualization capabilities, which are able to show contours, densities, or vectors over any combination of 3D slices or 3D geometric region surfaces. There's also a new 4D transparent density plot function that leverages Mathematica's built-in 3D image rendering capabilities. Even very basic plotting routines continue to improve, with better automatic discontinuity detection to give you more accurate plots with less work. Graph visualization is now included in the Visual Themes framework, making it easier to produce professional-looking visuals. As Mathematica's built-in real-world knowledge increases, 
It also becomes more important to add domain-specific visualizations to make sense of the data. This, for example, uses the new anatomy plot function to generate a customized 3D representation of the human body. And of course, if we wanted to, we could send this to a 3D printer. The geometry of the human body is just one property of the new anatomy knowledge base. Other new sets of computable data that have been included in the Wolfram knowledge base include food and nutrition data, geogravitational and geomagnetic data, human growth and mortality data, and lots of others. As well as adding lots more data to the knowledge base, the infrastructure underneath it has been upgraded so that you can now more efficiently query and aggregate data. And for the first time, you can also extend the knowledge base with your own entities and data so that you can access it all in the same unified way. One basic but very key feature of the knowledge base is support for units, and it supports a huge number of units. But just like every other part of Mathematica that makes sense, units have to work seamlessly with other functionality. And Mathematica 11 has extended support for this greatly. Units are now supported throughout statistics functionality, backed by a new efficient structure for unit-based arrays of data. Now this is especially impressive when you consider the huge scope of Mathematica's statistics. For example, by version 8, Mathematica had the largest collection of probability distributions of any system available, ahead of statistics-focused packages like SAS and R. Of course, it doesn't hold that record anymore, because Mathematica 11 has added a large collection of matrix distributions, putting it even further ahead of other systems. And of course, like all the other distributions, these new ones support all of the key statistics functionality, such as random number generation, parameter estimation, hypothesis testing, and transformations into custom distributions. Aside from coverage, lots of work goes into making Mathematica's statistics more reliable in difficult situations, without you having to intervene. And so Mathematica 11 improves sampling from discontinuous and singular distributions and applies more automatic simplifications to derived distributions. As well as better connectivity with units, statistics is also better connected to geometry, with the addition of support for uniform random sampling from geometric regions of any dimensionality. And also, converting from data to regions has also been improved, with new fast computations of bounding regions. Making sure that computations can be combined seamlessly is a design obsession at Wolfram. One domain that typifies the joined-up nature of Mathematica is geocomputation. It brings together the knowledge base, with information on cities, countries, terrain, mountains, lakes, and the rest, together with mathematical projections, custom visualizations, and computational analysis. All of these aspects of geocomputation have been enhanced. The knowledge base has been extended with historical country borders, much more polygon data, including administrative subdivisions of countries. Here, for example, I've created an animation of the growth of the Roman Empire. There are 100 new projections, giving Mathematica the most complete such collection of any computational system. Now, just think about that for a moment. Mathematica only took on geovisualization in version 10, less than two years ago. And already, it has surpassed dedicated applications. That's because our developers, just like you, have the entire technology stack of Mathematica to call on when they develop new functionality. It's a real testament to the power of integrated computation in an all-in-one system that you can develop so much so fast. Visualization has been extended with new geodensity plot, interactively zoom and panable maps, and there's satellite backgrounds now for not only Earth, but also the Moon and other planets. And finally, computation has been enhanced with new geohistograms, fast and accurate area calculations, and the ability to calculate road travel directions. Here, for example, are the best routes to Champaign, Illinois, from every major US city. Of course, computation is only a part of the story of Mathematica. The Wolfram language lets you develop applications for deployment to other people, from one-line apps using Mathematica's amazing manipulate command, to the millions of lines of Wolfram code that make web services like Wolfram Alpha possible. So, naturally, there are plenty of improvements to the development and deployment capabilities. But the central story for development is the same as it is for computation. We want desktop, cloud, and device development to join up just as seamlessly as computations do. Write once, deploy anywhere. So, the Wolfram Cloud has been updated to version 11 of the Wolfram language so that everything you can compute on the desktop can be deployed to the cloud, whether that's a form, a manipulate, an interactive document for human use, using only a browser, 
or to a cloud-based API for a computer program to access. A new version of the CDF player will let you share interactive documents for offline use, and a Raspberry Pi version will allow you to run the Wolfram language on embedded or autonomous devices. In the cloud, there are richer ways to specify web forms, improved automatic report generation, and a new framework for sequencing questions from users in multi-page forms. But as well as improved interface building, the software development toolkit has also been extended with new tools for storing data in the cloud, network programming, cryptography, asynchronous messaging between applications, and other system-level programming tools. New versions of Mathematica are not just about adding new capabilities, though. Algorithmic advances give us regular opportunities just to make existing functionality better. As well as some improvements to robustness in the face of pathological problems, some of which I've already mentioned, there are constant efforts to improve speed performance too. Some of the most notable improvements can be found in image processing, geometry and graph calculations, where several algorithms are now many times faster. Mathematica 11 is not just the most capable version of Mathematica ever, it's also the fastest. Execution speed, though, is only part of the equation. It's also vital to improve the development speed. As the breadth of Mathematica grows, it becomes ever more important that we can continue to improve the ease of use of the system. After all, what's the point in fast computation if it takes you a long time to instruct the computer? Central to ease of use is our focus on automation. Making sure that algorithm choice, parameter choices, and the handling of difficult corner cases are all automated remains a key design aim and a key differentiator against more traditional computation systems. Let me show you a really simple example. Mathematica 11 spots the discontinuities in this plot, and it doesn't join up the different sections. Now, I could have specified those breaks myself in previous releases, which was a minor waste of my time. But more importantly, if I was a fresh student, or this was a more complex example, I might not know that there was an issue there to fix. And joining the plot over the discontinuities might confuse me or mislead me. Mathematica is full of such automation, but unfortunately I don't have time to talk about it. Instead, I'll just highlight some nice interface improvements. There are now more cases where Mathematica will offer you contextually relevant auto-completion, making it easier than ever to find the right command and to save you a little bit of typing. Improved code tooltips now help you to read Wolf language code in 12 different languages. Here you can see hints as to what this code means in Russian, and they appear automatically as you type. Likewise, spell checking has been extended to 25 languages and includes collections of technical terms, and it also happens in real time. Error messages now let you immediately see a stack trace of where the error occurred. So for example, I can see the source of the error in this badly written function is another function I've written called my internal function, being called with a value of zero. Everyone's use of Mathematica is different, but with enhancements to many of its key domains of use, the inclusion of new computation domains, improvements to robustness, performance, and ease of use, there is something for almost every existing Mathematica user, and hundreds of fresh reasons to reconsider Mathematica if you or your colleagues are not already part of the family. So, please, set some time aside to look at the full summary of new features on the website, and do hang around now for some of the more in-depth talks that are to follow. But before that, I'd be happy to try and take some of your questions. Thank you.